Hello, I'm Anita Ginyard Rogers, Senior Director of the PMO and the Distribution Division. My first Juneteenth celebration was a year ago where a large group of us took off to celebrate Juneteenth from NPR. Um, I, had I had celebrated by connecting with my own heritage, um, in particular, my mother's side of the family. My mother had a pretty traumatic upbringing. She grew up poor in Mississippi. Her father was a sharecropper, as many Black folks were after slavery ended. My mom describes her beginnings as living in a one-bedroom shack with four siblings and her parents. Today, my mom lives on Capitol Hill here in DC, pretty progressive area and in a mixed marriage. In relation to my mom and that journey from poverty to wealth, it was a, it was a great struggle. Um, and, it, and it doesn't end there for our race. We celebrate the freedom from slavery, but freedom came without resources to survive. So Juneteenth to me, is a celebration of that freedom, the journey um, to survival, and the acknowledgement of the significant history in America. It marks one step in moving forward and the in the ability to heal. So happy Emancipation Day. On Juneteenth, my moment of reflection will be on my grandfather, Felix Eduardo Arrieta a silver rule laborer during the construction of the Panama Canal. As an Afro-Caribbean, he and those who looked like him were paid lower wages than the white privileged Americans who were there. My grandfather was considered a unskilled worker. And so as a result of that, he and those who looked like him were placed in housing communities with substandard resources, uh, unsanitary conditions, you know, that of course led to high levels of malaria, yellow fever, and as we know, that killed a lot of people there. And uh, it was a racially segregated administration, the Panama Canal Company, which was the United States company that took over the construction of the Panama Canal back in the early 1900s. Uh, my grandfather um, died when he was 100 and, 104. On this day, Juneteenth, I am going to think about him and the sacrifices that he and the other silver roll workers uh, made during the construction of the canal. It's a rarely talked about moment in history and, you know, it's okay. Uh, and I will dedicate this time uh, in this space to think about them, their hard work and you know, digging a ditch in the hot, hazy, humid, mosquito infested, tropics, um, getting underpaid, marginalized, and treated unfairly by the company that they worked for. Hello, my name is Summer Hill. And I'm the social media associate for NPR Extra. Um, I learned about Juneteenth very, very late in the game. I was definitely a teenager when I learned about it. And I learned about it through my own research, not through school. Um, not even my family really knew too much about it. But once I found out about it. I definitely told them and shared the knowledge and the wealth, and we certainly celebrate it now. Um, I celebrate it different, differently every year. Um, sometimes it's as simple as just doing some research, um, reading, finding out history, um, and really just acknowledging where we came from. But I think that this is a holiday that is very important to celebrate because oftentimes we are told to forget that this happened, forget the past, move forward. Um, but I don't think that can be done without acknowledging the history that we have faced and went through um, that still affects us in this present day. Um, Juneteenth is a very important holiday to me um, and I think should be celebrated widely. It can be celebrated in many different ways, whether that's acknowledging um, reading a book about slavery or um, learning some learning about someone that you didn't know about before who was heavy in the slavery movement or even practicing your own civil rights. Um, but I am very grateful that this holiday is celebrated and I plan to continue to celebrate this legacy and not let it be forgotten. Um, and my, my family and their generations of family will continue to celebrate it as well. I think it is important for this holiday to be celebrated. Um, like I said earlier, just practicing your civil rights. So that means um, 
exercising your rights that you were giving, exercising the privilege that you were giving to make other people knowledgeable about this holiday and to make sure that other people know about this holiday and where it comes from and why we celebrate and why it is so important to continue to celebrate and continue to learn about because this still affects us in the present day and it can it will continue to affect us um, until we actually make changes. Um, we as in all of us, as in each and every single one of us, make some type of change um, to progress for the future. Hi, my name is Jasmine Richmond and I am the new diversity and training project coordinator on the NPR training team. I'm so excited to join the NPR family, and I can't think of a better way to uh, make an introduction than to share what Juneteenth means to me. For me, Juneteenth is a day of reflection and celebration. It's a day to celebrate Black lives, Black culture, and Black excellence. Juneteenth reminds me that I come from a long line of resilient people and that despite what some may think, Black lives matter and Black futures are bright. It's even more significant to acknowledge and remember this day as Black communities and allies rally together to achieve the justice and freedom it symbolizes. It's a reminder of the impact that I want to make within my community and to honor my ancestors and many others that have come before me. I dedicate my time to giving back, to engaging in courageous conversations about race and social injustice, to creating space that nurtures empathy, growth, and cultural understanding to empowering those around me with the tools to share their experiences and become active leaders within their communities. For this day and every day, I will continue to learn and take action to build a more just and peaceful world where justice is truly achieved for all. And I hope you do the same. Hello, my name is Ivory Atley, and I'm here to give my reflections on Juneteenth. I remember hearing about Juneteenth as a young boy growing up in the South. In the, in the South, you would become acutely aware of the impact of the freedom of slavery in the 1860s. And today, because of that experience, I reflect on Juneteenth in two purposes, in twofold. One is as a reminder, and two is as a guidebook. As a reminder, it reminds me of the impact of the sacrifices that individuals made to allow African-Americans to have the privilege they have today. As a guidebook, it serves as a purpose of reminding us that we're still, we're still in a fight. And that fight is for social injustice, equity, and inclusion. NPR's forward-thinking programming, such as Code Switch, Louder Than a Riot, and Invisibilia, are tools in furthering NPR's mission of public information for all. The Public Information for All mission for NPR is a core asset in fighting for social injustice, gaining equity and equality. And these are my reflections on Juneteenth. What does Juneteenth mean to me? Juneteenth is the resilience of a people. It's a celebration. It's a reclaiming of narrative, of heritage. It's the ancestors speaking back and saying, we shall not be forgotten because our stories and our lives mattered.